Hi, George here. And today we'll be taking a look at doing a new project that's kind of a combination of a couple of things I did previously on the old channel. One is a cut through paper effect. You can see that up here with the cat silhouette. And the second one is putting a mosaic in behind a cat picture or into a cat silhouette. So two old projects combined into one project right here. And to get this thing started, the first thing we'll need is a whole bunch of cat pictures. So I have a folder with a lot that I've picked up. Let's go ahead, we'll open that up. Close this down. There we go. Let's set this thing back to layers. That's good. And I'll now open up that folder. There we go. And for this, you need a bunch of pictures. I just grabbed this from a lot of things I've used over the years on this channel. And a really easy way to bring in a bunch of pictures is to just open up a drive window like this, select everything. I'll just drag. There we go. And just drag and drop right into Photoshop Elements. And that opens those all up in one shot. Real easy way to open up a whole bunch of pictures. You can use this as floating windows or you can use this as regular windows. Doesn't matter for this project in the least. Let's get these kind of out of the way here. There we go. So either like this is fine or floating is fine. Again, doesn't matter. Now the first thing we need to do is to set up our basic collage or mosaic. And for that, go up here where it says create. And then come down to photo collage. Now this is one of those things, this area here is one of those things that changes almost every single version of Photoshop Elements. So your photo collage could be in a different spot on this menu, but it'll be here someplace. i just bring this one up. This takes you into the create section for this. It's basically a guided edit. Let that open up and it will make you a beginning collage just like this. This is just your default one. It's the top left-hand corner right there. You can either bring in images here from your computer or from the organizer. Since we already had images open, it used the open images. Now the first thing you want to do is to decide which collage you want to be working with. And I want a vertical one, you know, portrait format here. I'll use this one with the kind of diagonal lines. Double click on that. It will then reconfigure this whole thing for that. There we go. In this case, it takes the first eight pictures since this has eight spots. It took our first eight pictures. Let's say you don't want to keep one of these images in here. Maybe this one right here. If you double click on an image, it brings up a little toolbar right here where you can work with that image. You can rotate this left or right. There we go. You can make it larger or smaller. Notice if you go too small, you may see the edges of your image in here. So keep the edges in mind when you're doing this. It's better to enlarge as opposed to going smaller or reducing. You can just delete this whole frame in here. Click on that. Deletes the whole frame and then it reconfigures the whole mosaic. In that case, we would have seven spaces instead of eight spaces. And right here, we can choose a different photo. Just click on that and then navigate to your photo folder. And I think this one right here would be a good one. Double click on that. It's going to exchange that picture and there we go. I can then move this around for a good position. I think that's pretty good. Let's go over here, double click on this one. Let's see what we have in here. Got a little bit of space on this. I'll grab the control handle right here. I can then actually make it larger or smaller using that control handle as well. You see how much room I have? Got a little bit more room. Okay, it's just coming off the edge up there. So that's about as big as I can make that one. And then just go through and double check your images and adjust them so they fit properly. That's a good spot for that. I should kind of like that position, maybe just a little bit higher. There we go. Again, watch your corners, watch your edges, make sure you don't lose anything off the edge. Come down here. You can see how Photoshop Elements has tried to basically maximize the image to fit inside the area. And we can adjust that. And it's a little easier to adjust from the bottom side down here because the toolbar may be covering up your control handles at the top. And we'll work through and just check every single one. Looks like that's about as good as I can get over here. Come down to this one. Yeah, see if we can get them centered better. That's pretty good there. And our final one, double click. And I think that's okay right here. Now you can also use the cursor keys, those arrow keys on your keyboard, to tap this up and down and left and right for a real fine tune on your position. And right then again, watch your corners. Looks like I'm just getting off the edge right here on that corner. So go up just a little bit. And there we go. Okay, here's our basic mosaic. Now I want to have more pictures than this. I want to have a smaller mosaic for our final image. So we'll be doing a couple of steps to this. Come down here where it says save. At the bottom we have save and close. So I'll just save this project out, I'll click on save. And I have a folder here I have on my hard drive, I just call it projects. And here's the one we looked at at the beginning. Let's just make this new one here. I'll call this one cats2. So our project is now saved. Choose close and you're back here again. So we can just get all this stuff closed out or go up here to the file menu and you can come down and close all. And it closes all of those out. 
Let's just first bring up our image again here. Recently edited, and it's one here that says PSE on the end. That's one of our combined things. Now, since this is one of these creates, it's in a special file format. It's the PSE file format. We need to have this in the PSD file format. So let's do a save as on this. Go over here to file, come down to save as. And let's change our format here to just the Photoshop format. That's our PSD file format. Choose save. We can then go ahead and close this down. Let's now open that one up. That's right here, CATS2 PSD. And here's the same thing as a regular Photoshop file, which includes all these folders in here and images and so forth. Now, if I minimize that folder, so we have a lot of these folders in here. Each one is for each different section. I'll just come in and minimize all of these. Just makes it easier to see what's going on in here. So they're all minimized. Now, each one of these is in its own folder. Each section is in its own folder. If I show or hide that, you can see which one it is. That's the bottom left-hand corner right there. If we open that up, Here's the two elements for that. We have the picture itself, and then here is a mask that gives us that nice mask shape. So that's how all of these work. Now what we need is to have all of these combined into one layer at the top. So click on your top layer up here, shift control alt, and then tap the E key, and that combines all of this onto one new layer up here. Now we're gonna be needing four of these, four total. So it's right click, duplicate layer, choose okay, right click duplicate layer choose okay again one more time right click duplicate layer and choose okay now that we have our four copies in here i want to reduce those but first let's hide everything i'll just hide all these layers in here and if your folders are still showing make sure you hide all those as well we want to have this just showing the white background go up to view come down to new guide i have mine at horizontal set this at 50 percent and it puts a horizontal guide right here in the middle. We want a vertical guide, same idea. View menu, come down to new guide, set this to vertical, and then 50%. There we go. Let's now show all of these layers, and then click your top layer, hold the shift key down, click the bottom layer, so they're all four selected. And you can kind of see we have little control handles in the corners. Grab the upper left-hand control handle, pull that down and then resize that down so it fits into one of those areas that we just made with our guidelines. Hit the green check mark and that's all set. Now, click on the top layer and just drag it up here like that. Click on our next layer down, drag that up into here. Next layer down and drag that over and there we go, there's all of our images. If you want to kind of carefully reposition these things, maybe you have a bit too much white space showing in between these, just click on one of your layers and use the arrow keys on your keypad and you can tap that layer around kind of fine tune its exact position but i think those all look pretty good we now need a new layer in front of this go to the new layer button click on that here's our new layer let's now fill this over here to the color picker bottom left hand side of our tool panel and come into the orange areas in here and you'll be able to find a nice tan color like that's good choose okay grab the paint bucket Click anywhere inside that fills that with that tan color. Back to our move tool. And now's a good time to mention a new program that I have just set up. Let me bring that up so I can show that to you. And this right here is my HTG Photo Coach for Adobe Photoshop Elements. And this is an AI-based learning tool that will help to answer any questions you have about any particular steps on using Photoshop Elements. Really great tool when you're working along with my video training. If you want a bit more information, just go over here and you can do a quick search. Like right in here, we just used that color picker. So I'll just do a search in here for color picker. There's a color picker panel right there. Click on that. And that brings up information about the color picker panel. Now I've done a couple hundred articles in here so far. I'm still kind of finishing things up. I have a few more things to do in edit edits, a few more things to do in the create section. And then this will be all finished. But real easy on how to use the step-by-step instructions on how to use any of these different parts of Photoshop Elements. So it's perfect when you're working along with one of my videos and you want just a bit more information about that, just go over there to the Photo Coach and quickly do your search and there's your information. Now my plan for this is to have the Photo Coach as a perk if you join my channel as a channel member. Now the membership is just gonna be $5 a month, so it's real cheap. There's some other perks in there as well, other YouTube style perks but the main one is gonna be access to this photo coach for Photoshop Elements. 
But since I'm still working on this and I don't have the membership site built yet, I'm still getting all that stuff finalized. I am putting this available, kind of an early release availability here for one price for a lifetime access to this photo coach. Just $29 lifetime access. The normal cost for this, if you join as a member, would be about $60 a year, $5 a month. So this is half the cost of a yearly membership for lifetime access. But again, this is just a limited time offer. As soon as I finish building this thing out, as soon as I have it all set to go, it will only be available as a membership. Now, it's not just the photo coach. I also am putting up step-by-step -step guides. This is what I'm working on right now. And I'll have these available for every single one of my videos. Just come in, look for the title of the video you want, click on that, and you'll then get a step-by-step -step instruction on that particular video. So all that's gonna be included in here. But the big one is this photo coach which is driven by AI and it helps you answer any questions you have about Photoshop elements. And it's perfect for working along with any video training like I have on YouTube or I have in my standard training courses, my video training courses. And again, it's just $29 right now, lifetime membership, lifetime access for a very limited time. So make sure you jump on this fast. And I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get back to the project. Our next step in here is to add a texture onto this, and that's easy to do. Go up to Filter, come down to the Filter Gallery, and in here you want to be in the Texture section right here, and I'm using the Texturizer bottom right-hand corner. It's kind of the last filter in the whole thing right there. I have mine set at Canvas. Scaling is at 200%, and the relief I have mine set at 15, I think is pretty good. The relief just shows you how much detail you have in there. The higher the relief, the more detail, but notice it also goes more black and white. The lower the relief, more color, but less texture. And for this one, I think 15 looks pretty good. Okay, my lighting is at top left, which is fine. When you're happy, choose okay. Now it looks really weird here. That's just because we're zoomed out on this. If I zoom in, Notice that kind of weird pattern and goes away. And we now just have this nice texture. So don't worry about this kind of strange look temporarily. That's just because we're zoomed out inside of Photoshop Elements. That goes away on the final part of this. Okay, the last thing we need to do is to bring a cat picture in here to use kind of as a cookie cutter to cut through this and to show our images in behind. So for that, come down to the graphics button right here, or you can access this from the window menu and graphics right here, or the F7 keyboard shortcut if you want to. Set this for shapes, and that'll put you right there. And then if you scroll down a little ways, we have some cat silhouettes. We're using this one here. Change your colors over here to the defaults. That's a button right down there. Black in front. Double click on this, or you can even drag and drop. Brings it in. Now there are control handles on our corners. I'll grab the upper left hand corner, and I'll drag this picture up like that. Get the bottom right hand corner drag down to get a nice fill, hit the green check mark. Now it's backwards, I want them facing the other direction. Let's go back here to the layers panel. There we go. And then come up here to image and rotate. You want to flip the layer horizontal. It just reverses that. Let's now make this into a cookie cutter. So for that, hold the control key down, click that thumbnail, and then you should see those marching ants selection right around there. We can now hide that thumbnail, come down to the texture layer, and I need to invert that selection. Go up here to select, come down to inverse. Kind of hard to see the marching ants, but they're there. And then hit the layer mask button. And what the layer mask button does is it shows anything which is selected and it hides anything which is not selected, which in this case acts as a cookie cutter and allows us to see the mosaic in behind. Now the last thing I want to do is put a little bit of a drop shadow around this so it gives the effect of this being cut out of this texture. So go up to layer, come down to layer style, Style Settings, you want Drop Shadow, and I'll set my lighting angle over here, kind of upper left-hand corner, that's pretty good. The size is how soft the edge is, the distance is how far away it is, and Opacity, of course, is how dark it is. I'm gonna set the Opacity clear to the top just for a moment here. I'll pull the distance out. You can see that there is that edge right in there. And I want right about here, if I change the size, it makes that edge softer. So just a little bit of softening, but not very much. The distance is good. I'm gonna pull back the opacity so I can see a bit of the image through that. It's like about 50% should be pretty good. There we go, and that gives us that little bit of a shadowing in here. So it looks as if this has been cut out and we're seeing the mosaic in behind. And then choose okay. And final thing, let's hide these guides. Go up to view, uncheck guides, 
and there's the finished image. Now, don't forget, if you want to have access to that HTG photo guide for Photoshop Elements, make sure you grab that right now because I have that lifetime access for just $29. This is very limited. As soon as I finish building it out, I'm only going to be allowing access if you're a member, unless you grab it right now at that pre-release price. So I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe as well. And I'll see you next time.